Okay, last time we saw that if x1 up to xn are iid random variables, and if we define x n bar equal to 1 over n sn, where sn is just the sum x1 up to xn, and if we assume that the expected value of mu, I mean of x is mu, and the standard deviation of x, so any of the xi's, and any of the xi's is sigma, then we saw that we saw that the um, that the expected value of x bar n is mu, and the standard deviation of x bar n is sigma over square root of n. And since this is just n times that, it's very simple to see by the exact same reasoning, or you can derive it from the above, that this is n times mu, and the standard deviation of Sn is sigma square root of n. Because I've just multiplied both of them by n. This time I just get mu n, and this time I get square root of n, because I have this factor here of 1 over n in front. Now, we've already seen that for independent Bernoullis, if we add up a bunch of independent Bernoullis, right, so if, if xi are Bernoulli, Bernoulli p, then sn is binomial np. And we saw that we had the central limit theorem, or or the normal approximation for that binomial said that we could approximate Sn in this particular case by the, the Gaussian function, the normal distribution. But, okay, in general, it still is true. So in other words, in general, we have the following statement, that the probability that um, Sn minus its mean, n times mu, divided by its standard deviation which is, in this case, sigma square root of n, the probability that this is um, less than b, but um, greater than a, is approximately equal to phi of b minus phi of a. Now, we don't have any continuity corrections here because we haven't assumed anything about the, uh, the, the fact that these are integer values like we did for the binomial, they were integer valued, so we could make a better approximation using the continuity correction. But in this more general setting where we just know they're independent random variables, we just have this much simpler, straightforward normal approximation without the continuity correction. But notice this is exactly like what we had before. So back to the binomial case, back to the binomial case, we had that, so back to the binomial, we had that this same object was approximately what we would get if we had taken, um, if we asked for Sn, if we asked for Sn less than um, B greater than A, then our binomial approximation said that this was approximately, well, B minus um, b minus the mean, which was, um, let's just write mu n again, and then we divided that by sigma uh, times the square root of n, and we subtracted that from phi of a minus the mu n over sigma square root of n. And so if we just now, just to see how these two things translate back and forth, we can set, let's just do one of them, let's set b equal to capital B minus mu n over sigma square root of n. Then if we solve back for what, if this says the same thing, let's just notice that now if we, um, so actually I want to do some, sorry, I want to do something slightly, no, that's the right thing to say. So now we can solve for what b would be in terms of this, so then b would be, B is equal to what? It's equal to mu n plus b times sigma square root of n. And 
And similarly, a will be mu n minus a sigma square root of n, where, where I'm sorry, I made a typo. No, that's right. That's good. That's right. Um, oh, that's right. There we go. And now, if I go ahead and plug into this formula, and we ask ourselves, what would this be equal to? Well, let's just, we want to just see what this inequality turns into. So that's Sn less than mu n plus d sigma square root of n, and greater than mu n plus a sigma sigma square root of n. And now if we rearrange things, we can subtract the mu n's over, and we get the Sn minus mu n, and that's less than a sigma square root of n. And on this side, we have b sigma square root of n. And now if we just divide through by sigma square root of n, these cancel, and this is equal to a. This is over sigma square root of n. And again, here we have sigma square root of n, and these cancel, and that's just equal to b. And so we have a is less than sn minus mu n over sigma square root of n is less than b, which is exactly what this statement says. So with these choices, they're really just exactly the same thing, except for the continuity correction. But this, we're now stating, is true in general, not just for the binomial distribution.